listening to Big World Network. Just Kill Me, Season 2, Episode 8, Darth Vader Returns. Written by Wendy Herman. Read by Wendy Herman. Trevor was being so nice to me. I didn't know if I would ever get around to telling him everything that had happened that day, or if I'd have the guts. He'd rushed into my hospital room like I'd been in a tragic car accident or something, and stayed until I was released. Rip had left soon after Trevor arrived, and they pretended not to notice each other. But I could have cut the tension with a chainsaw. I didn't know if it would be easier to tell my husband I had strong feelings for his best friend if they were still acting like best friends, but either way, this was not going to be a picnic. Picnic. Don't think about the picnic, Freya. The word alone made me tingle all over. How could I tell Trevor about that? I asked myself on the car ride home from the hospital. It would destroy him. I realized I was being selfish, determined to tell Trevor that I loved Rip and him. What was I expecting him to do, jump up and down for joy just to be in the running? Was I really that conceited? And no matter what his reaction, what was I going to do after he knew, assuming he didn't make that decision for me and take himself out of the picture? Eventually, I was going to have to choose between my husband of 15 years, with whom I had three beautiful children, and the man who had been my first real love, and was not only my husband's best friend, but my best friend as well. And that was the realization I had been avoiding. Who did I love more? I wasn't sure at that point, and worried that I may never know. What if I chose the wrong man? I was playing with people's lives, and no matter who I chose to be with, all our lives would be irrevocably altered. What would my children think of me if Daddy moved out and Uncle Rip moved in? How could I even be thinking of ending my marriage after one strange, albeit intense, encounter with Rip? Just yesterday I had been content with the way things were. Was I ready to throw my life into a Category 5 tornado? It was overwhelming, and I was suddenly nauseated and dizzy. Through the haze, however, I kept focusing on one fact. If life experience had taught me anything, being honest right up front was a lot less painful in the long run, and I had always been the type to rip the band-aid off in one swift motion. Plus, Trevor and I didn't keep secrets from each other. When we arrived at our house, Talia was eating popcorn and sitting in the living room with all the lights off, watching Tank Girl, one of her favorites in my special collection that also included Stargate, Judge Dredd, and every Mystery Science Theater 3000 ever made. She quickly turned it off when she saw us and hurried to me, asking if I was all right. I assured her I was just fine, and she gave me a heartfelt hug that aggravated my tailbone, but my microscopic flinch went unnoticed. She quickly excused herself, after Trevor and I both thanked her profusely for watching the boys, and she brushed past my husband to leave through the back door in the kitchen. The boys and I actually called it Talia's door. She stopped next to me and whispered in my ear, You're my hero. A few seconds later, I heard Talia's door open and close. I wondered if Trevor had told her what I'd done to my young captor. But if he knew, Rip must have told him, and I'm pretty sure that was against the rules. I shook my head slightly. I didn't have the energy to analyze Talia's comment. I just wanted to go to bed. After Trevor escorted me into each of the boys' bedrooms to gently kiss their sleeping heads, he practically carried me into the bedroom and tucked me into our king-sized bed. I didn't protest. I was kind of enjoying it. He sat next to me on the edge of the bed and smiled down at me. Then his smile faded. I was so worried about you, he said with such concern in his voice. I felt sorry for him. I grabbed his hand and squeezed. I'm so sorry. I should have called you as soon as I was safe. But I was so single-minded. I just needed to get those boys to the hospital. I hoped I wasn't revealing too much, but I was gauging his reaction too, trying to discern how much he already knew. He squeezed my hand back, unfazed by everything I'd said. You're safe. You're here. That's all I care about. He leaned down and kissed me gently. He tasted like coffee. 
He always inhaled the stuff when he was stressed, and I guess it had been a somewhat stressful day for both of us. He stood and began emptying his pockets, placing the contents on his dresser. Then he chuckled. You know, I didn't think that pretty boy nurse was going to let me take you home. He seemed very protective of you. He was clearly amused, as opposed to jealous. I replied, That kid was flirting with me from the minute I walked into the ER, and I was covered in blood and looked horrendous. We laughed together. Maybe I reminded him of his mother, I added. I laughed at this, but Trevor shook his head. First of all, you and horrendous have never been in the same country together, and anyone who's legally considered an adult would never think of you as their mother. He sat by me again, and this time the kiss was filled with passion. That tingle went through me. Apparently the tingle wasn't going to give me any indication of whose team it was on, Rips or Trevor's. Thanks for nothing, blasted Tingle. Even crazed Twilight fans could make a decision. We pulled apart, and Trevor was peering into my soul. I felt the need to lighten the mood a little. Well, he came in handy, though, when I needed a phone to call Rip. You called Rip? he asked, his smile fading fast. His eyes flickered with jealousy. Or maybe it was my imagination. As far as I knew, he had no reason to be jealous of Rip. Yet. Well, he was my partner for the assi- He's your partner now? he accused. When were you going to tell me that? Jealousy and anger now, and I wasn't imagining either one. He knew. How much he knew, I was unsure. But he knew enough to be suspicious. How much did he tell you? I risked asking, hoping I would like the answer. He stood and walked away from me, stopping at the foot of the bed. He seemed to be having trouble looking at me. That's when I realized. He knew everything. Rip told you about the, what happened at the bridge, didn't he? He looked at me. The answer was clawing its way out of his eyes. Why in the hell did Rip feel the need to tell my husband, his best friend, that we had almost... that we had almost... Band-Aid, Freya, rip it off like a Band-Aid. That we had almost gotten naked together under an abandoned bridge in the desert. I may be in love with Rip, but at that moment I wanted to run him over with my minivan. How dare he? I would have to deal with him later. I tried to sit up, wincing at my bruised tailbone. Trevor was suddenly concerned again and came to my side. He helped me prop myself up in a comfortable sitting position. "'What did those goons do to you?' he asked, almost to himself, as he arranged the pillows behind my back. Before I could stop myself, I answered, "'You can thank your buddy Rip for this one. When he fell on top of me, I hit—' Trevor abruptly stood and walked back to the foot of the bed, pacing. "'Okay, that was a stupid thing to say, in light of what was going on, but Rip and I had just been horsing around at that point. It wasn't even part of the—' Well, the part that Trevor clearly didn't want to talk about. Why couldn't he just tell me that he knew and give me a chance to explain that it wasn't real? Why didn't you say anything? He glanced up at me like a wounded animal, but didn't respond. Why have you been so nice? His face changed to confusion, but he still didn't speak. The words came fast, and I felt my face heat up. If you knew that Rip and I had almost had sex in the desert, why aren't you livid? Why didn't you pack your bags and leave me? How can you just stand there and try to pretend I didn't almost cheat on you? I was mad now, and I didn't know why. I was the one in the wrong, and I was yelling at him. He was silent for a moment and then rubbed his face with his hand, as if he was trying to rub the whole situation away. Then he took a deep breath. How can you ask why I didn't leave? he asked quietly. It was my turn to look confused. He let an infinitesimal smile escape. I love you, Freya. I love you so much. I could never leave you. I was taken aback by his honesty. The statement itself rivaled the sappiest lines from all those cheesy movies I hated. And maybe any other woman would be swept away by it. But to tell the truth, it rubbed me the wrong way. I felt like he was really saying that he would never let me leave him. The look in his eyes was unsettling. He could read me like a book, and he knew I had received his message loud and clear. We stared at each other for a moment. 
the natural thing to do after your husband tells you he loves you is to reciprocate the statement, and that's exactly what he was waiting for. And that's exactly why I couldn't say it. There was nothing natural about the way he was looking at me, like he owned me, and there was nothing I could do about it. I still wanted to explain what happened at the bridge. He had to know it was not something Ripper I intended. It was a sort of simultaneous glitch in our psyches, or something. Did Rip tell you we weren't ourselves when it it happened? We were having some sort of surreal flashback of when we were dating back in college. It was almost like a drug-induced hallucination. It was so real. He cut me off as he came back to sit by me on the bed. We don't need to talk about that right now. The point is, nothing happened. Not really. You didn't intend to cheat on me, and you didn't cheat on me. That's all I need to know. He leaned down and kissed me on the forehead. I'll let you get some rest. He smiled at me, and he was the old Trevor again. The Trevor I knew. The Trevor I loved. Then he left the room, turning the light out as he went. Trevor? It escaped my mouth without my knowledge, but I knew what I wanted to ask him. I heard his footsteps stop. He didn't come back, but responded from the hallway. What? He replied curtly. Why did Rip and I break up? It was met by silence, but I had to know. Back in college, before I met you, one of us must have told you how we broke up. I counted the seconds of uncomfortable quiet. Five, six, seven, eight. You really don't remember? No, please, I, I just need to know. I heard a heavy sigh. He cheated on you. His footsteps sounded again, and the old wooden stairs creaked under his weight as he quickly descended. He was lying. I knew with every cell in my body that he was lying. If he didn't know the answer, he would have just said he didn't know, but why lie about it? I sat there in the dark for what seemed like an eternity. My mind reeled. I thought of Stepford Wives, the weird original, not the even weirder remake, and wondered if there was a fembot out there somewhere that looked just like me but with bigger boobs. The Trevor I had just met was capable of it, I was sure. Or maybe it was the painkillers coursing through my veins. Whatever it was, I didn't like myself, I didn't feel like myself at all, and it was freaking me out. Why didn't Trevor want to hear the explanation? If I thought he had almost cheated on me, I would want no need to know every sort of detail, no matter how it would devastate me. Of course, sweeping traumatic events under the rug and trying to pretend they didn't happen was standard procedure for him. He had reacted the same way when Rowan choked on the quarter and when I announced I wanted to be an FBI agent. But then there was the obvious lie. For what reason? To make me hate Rip? I thought of the attempted reenactment of the sex under the oak extravaganza and smiled. I remembered every second of it. But at the time, I had forgotten I was married, that I was a mom, that I had lived more than 20 years since that day. I had been 19 again, 19 and terminally in love with Ty Ripley. I wrapped my arms around my chest and sank down in the bed. I closed my eyes and let the pain pill take me. It seemed like only seconds, and I was deep in a dream. Ty. Listening to Big World Network.